Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I'm the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is part two of a three-part video series where I am doing kind of a 101 on Eagle CAD printed circuit board manufacturing. So in part one, if you haven't watched it, please click the little uh, banner up there. Part one, we walked you through creating the schematic. This section is actually going to take that schematic, turn it into a printed circuit board, and kind of show you the process of routing uh, the printed circuit board out to make all the electrical connections. So let's get on with it. Okay, so we're back. Thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you've watched these back to back. If not, then uh, there's some time and space in between the last one. This is the schematic we created in the first video. If you had not had the opportunity to go watch that, go ahead and click the little uh, banner at the top there. So to get this schematic into a printed circuit board, Eagle makes it uh, very, very easy. So all you have to do, there's a little icon up here that says SCH and BRD, that is schematic and board. You just simply click this icon and it's gonna say, hey, um, this uh, board does uh, not exist. Do you wanna create it from, from the schematic? And if you say yes, it, boom, it's gonna open a uh, printed circuit board with all your parts. Uh, it's gonna set the default size of the printed circuit board. And then it's gonna maintain that link between your schematic and your printed circuit board. Okay, so you have your printed circuit board. You can see the board footprint is actually quite large for the project we're gonna make, but uh, I'll show you how to edit that in, in, in just a bit. Quick walk through the user uh, interface. Similar sort of layout here with the uh, toolbar. Uh, here, this toolbar here right now is empty. It's, it's context sensitive. It'll change based on what operation you're doing. Um, again, same sort of similar icons down the side. Couple notable differences. This icon here is known as route and this icon is known as rip up. Um, these are the two you will be using almost exclusively in the printed circuit board editor as well as manipulating the layers. Uh, so you use route to actually lay down a trace on the printed circuit board, which is the copper that connects uh, the signals. And then rip up is how you rip up a trace. Uh, so if you just highlight a trace and you hit delete, uh, what Eagle wants to do is actually delete the connection of the signal, which will back annotate into the schematic. Uh, that's not what you want to do. You just want to rip up the copper. It's a little uh, cumbersome, but it, it makes perfect sense once you get into it. Couple of things to throw out here. Uh, there's these rectangles here. I didn't point those out in the uh, schematic editor, but in the PCB editor, you can create rectangles and polygons to do what is known as a, a pour, uh, a, a large island of copper on your printed circuit board. Those are really useful for if you want to create a ground plane or a heat sink or maybe an antenna or something like that. That's what you would use that for. And then this icon here, which is a via icon, which is how you create a, a through hole through the board to connect the top and the bottom together. A via is typically what is known as a plated through hole, which means means uh, the top, the walls of the, the hole, and the bottom are all have copper in them, and so they're electrically connected, uh, versus this icon, which is just a pure hole. It is just a drill. It is not plated. It doesn't have any sort of electrical properties to it, so that's typically what you would use if you wanted a mounting hole. All right, so let's get into it real quick. Uh, one thing I want to do is the grid here. Uh, grid, I like to turn the grid on. Uh, right now, the default is uh, 50 mils and 5 mils, which is uh, 50 thousandths of an inch and 5 thousandths of an inch. Um, if you're working with parts that are designed almost exclusively in millimeters, it does make sense to change this to millimeters. Um, I, because of my way I, I kind of grew up and learned how to do PCBs, I'm used to the mils. Um, uh, sizing rather than millimeter sizing. So I, I generally leave it at this, but it's always good to have this. And, and I like lines for my grid instead of dots, personal preference. It's yours to do what you want to do with. All right, so let's get in this. Uh, we're going to zoom in here a little bit. Um, here are your parts. You can see the two headers and the two LEDs that we added. Um, we are going to click the move icon here and grab this guy. I'm going to rotate it, put it kind of right there. Grab this guy, rotate it, put it kind of right there. Grab U1, put it in the middle. Grab U2, 
put it in the middle. Now these yellow lines here are known, uh, what are known as unwired signals or rat's nests. Um, they follow the part around and they show you how the part is connected uh, from an electrical perspective to other parts on the printed circuit board. Um, it can get quite a mess when you have a large printed circuit board. So there's this magical little icon right here called rat's nest. If you click that, it cleans them up for you. And I clicked it here. You can see how now it, uh, it, it what it will do is it'll connect the parts to the closest pin that has the same electrical properties. So in this case, um, it eliminated some of the, the, the crossing wires and whatnot. Um, so in this case, I think we look pretty good from an electrical perspective. Let me see what's going on here. Um, ground, yeah, not too bad. So we're just gonna kind of leave it this way. So now you can see here that U1 and U2 was automatically pulled forward as well as the, the values of the parts, uh, JP1 and input. Uh, JP2 and output. Um, so this is where uh, Smash comes into play. It's uh, it's useful. Oops, let me put that back there and move this guy in right like that. Um, this little Smash icon. If you click on that and you smash it, you see what happened. I got two pluses here. I'm gonna click on that guy and I got two more pluses here. Uh, so what that does is it decouples these values, this this text from the actual symbol, so you can move it around independently. Um, in this case, this is the name of the part or the, what is known as the designator. I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to put that right there. And then this is the actual name of the part. This is something that will show up on a silk screen. Uh, and then put that there and then put that there. So when we have a user who is not familiar with the schematic, now they know when you when you have the silk screen on a printed circuit board that uh, input is on, uh, in this case, on the left side and output is on the right side. I'm going to do one more smash or two more if you want to look at it that way. I'm going to smash this guy and smash that guy. Uh, and here's why. These values here are not terribly useful on the printed circuit board. Um, in this case, uh, the values, if you were to uh, make the silk screen and include those, it would have all this extra junk on it, which is not uh, necessary. So if you click this guy um, and you highlight and hit delete, um, uh, hit delete, oops, sorry, highlight it, hit delete, select delete and delete. You don't need this value. Now I will click quickly go back into the schematic and show you the value is still there in the schematic. It didn't delete it from the schematic and merely deleted it from the view on the printed circuit board. Um, okay, so there you go. We kind of have our basic layout and now we're gonna do some, uh, some, some routing. Uh, in this case, I'm going to select the route button and you can see a bunch of icons pop up on uh, the toolbar here. And let me walk you very quickly through these because there's some really cool features of the new version of, uh, of Eagle here that are very exciting. Um, I'll be quite honest with you, I had a professional uh, CAD PCB program back in the day in the, in the 90s and it actually had these capabilities back then. So uh, I would say that Eagle's catching up <laughs> in, in some regard. I, I'm sure that it's because Autodesk is kind of pushing this and wants to make this their top tier product. But anyway, so uh, these three uh, icons in particular, this is uh, ignore obstacles, walk around obstacles and push obstacles. What that means is when you're running a trace, uh, say if you want to connect, I'll go ahead and do that, connect uh, J, this this signal here to where it needs to go. You can see it highlights right here which pin it's going to go to. This will route it for you automatically and avoid any obstacles, any intervening things that are not electrically connected to it. If I hit escape here and I, I turn that off and I do it again, you can see it'll let me route right through any of the the pads that would create a conflict. Now, if I were to do that, you can see if I zoom in here, the little red uh, on the where the intersections are here, um, this is what is known as a collision. Uh, this is where this signal is interfering with some other signal or some other design rule that is not prohibited by the specifications. So in this case, uh, N1, uh, which is the signal, is touching uh, N4 and whatever that says there, can't read it, N3, uh, which would mean would, you'd be shorting N1 to N4 and N3, which would not be good from an electrical perspective. So you wouldn't want to do that. So I'm going to hit escape, control Z, uh, command Z for me. Now the last thing here is push obstacles around when you're routing. If you have that turned on, it'll actually move the packages around out of the way of where you're routing. Uh, I typically don't use that. 
Um, other things of interest here are these little icons here. That These are the different ways in which the, 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 the trace will move. Uh, only make 90s, uh, 45s, we'll do straight lines, curved lines, S lines, uh, and different routing options here. This area here is where you select how thick the trace is. In this case, it's six mils. Um, that's my kind of go-to thickness. If you want to get uh, kind of crazy, you can go down to five or four. And in, in incredibly high-end printed circuit boards like your iPhone, you're going to see two mils. Uh, that's uh, two thousandths of an inch thick. Uh, that's really hard to produce reliably. So um, if you have the opportunity and you, you want to go with a low quality fab house, go with 10 uh, mils for your trace widths. Um, if you have someone who's fairly decent, six is a, a fair bet. Uh, this is the different sizes of the vias. Uh, and again, the vias are uh, plated through holes that go from the top through the bottom um, or through some intermediate layers and allow you to do elect electrical connectivities from the top to the bottom. Uh, square, round, and, uh, and uh, what is it, an oblong, uh, octagon, that's right. Um, this sets the drill size of the via that you are using. In this case, it's 20 mils. Um, I comfortably will go down to what is a 12 mil uh, hole, which is really, uh, in this case, it's going to be 11 mil drill because after it gets plated, it'll be 12 mils thick or 12 mils wide. Um, you can do 13. A lot of fab houses, when you get below a 12 in particular, will, will charge you an additional fee because a 12 mil drill bit is very, very small. They break a lot um, and so uh, they, they'll charge you extra for the breakage. Uh, the auto here just says that this this ring around the hole um, to automatically set the diameter of that ring based on the size of the drill bit. Um, so this is known as an annular ring. There's a specification for the minimum annular ring uh, to ensure good electrical connectivity. And so setting it to auto follows your design rules uh, that you have set up here, and it'll produce that based on the size of your drill. So, um, and uh, just if you're interested in how to get access to the, your what is known as the design rule checker, there's a little icon down here, design rule checker. I'll pull it up and I'll show it to you. Um, this gives you all the different design rules that you can set here. You can see the annular ring. Uh, in this case, it's uh, 10 mils or 25% um, or a maximum of 20 mils. Uh, different things about shapes and supplies, uh, thermal isolation. Um, I always like to have uh, generate thermals for vias on if you're using a ground plane. Not only does it look cool, there's actually a really good use for it. It does do a thermal break on it. Uh, your silk screen mask and then just miscellaneous settings. Um, now you can load uh, these uh, design rule checkers um, and if you're using something like Sieb, which is who I use to get my manufacturing from, or Bare Bones PCB, um, they actually have files for Eagle that you can download that'll set up your entire environment for their production chain, and that, that'll give you their rules so you know when you output your files, it'll meet their design rules as long as you don't have any design rule check errors whenever you go ahead and export. Okay, so we're going to connect these, and uh, I'm just going to uh, show you some quick things here. So uh, this is a surf surface mount part. These are known as pads. Uh, these are through hole parts. What that means is there's actually this annular ring, and then it'll drill a hole here so that the, the pin will go through the printed circuit board. Um, in this case, that means that uh, for a through hole part, there are pads on the top and the bottom. For a surface mount, there's only pads on whatever side the device is on. In this case, it's on the top. So this is where this layer of things come uh, really uh, is very important. Uh, you can see here the top layer, bottom layer, vias, pads, unrouted. So you can turn off the rat's nest if you don't want to see that. Um, if you want to stop parts from being moved, uh, the easiest thing to do that is to turn off the place. I'm sorry, turn off the origins here. Without an origin, you can't select it, uh, so it can't be moved. So those parts are more or less locked. Um, here, again, we added a value. If we were to turn the value off, you can see input and output are turned off. Uh, the names here, you can turn on and off. Um, you can also, oops, I accidentally double clicked this, but you can change the name if you wanted to say, hey, I want all my names to be, uh, you know, magenta. You click OK and, and boom, they're all magenta. Um, I generally, speaking of that, my uh, T-Place, which is otherwise known as your silk screen, um, I like to make that yellow. Uh, it's just me. Click OK and then I make the bottom yellow but a slightly different shade of yellow. Now you'll notice here, it, they don't offer very many colors. Uh, I don't know why, this is just the default. It's something I've just learned to deal with. <laughs> um, so there you go. So that's uh, not to be confused with the unrouted. You kind of get the picture, though. I kind of like using yellow for that.
Um, so in this case, I will turn off the top layer and you see these pads um, have turned themselves off. And then I'm gonna scroll down here and the document reference doc top doc bottom turn those off you see some of the some of this stuff has been missing um, so what T doc does is it allows you to show where there are features on your part uh, that are not going to end up on the silk screen um, and so it's really useful especially if you have a part that has a lot of uh, mechanical features that maybe overhang and you don't want to run into another part uh, but you don't want the silk screen to show at all so it's really useful uh, in that regard and the keep out and restrict uh, we'll talk about in a later video it's a little bit of a, a more advanced thing so in this case, uh, in the bottom here, you can see if I turn the bottom off, uh, there, there's nothing in the bottom, so nothing really happens. I'll turn the pads off. You see here, there's pads in the top and the bottoms, and we don't have any vias, um, but there you go. I'm going to turn it all on, and now we're going to do some routing here. Okay, so I quickly rearranged some of these parts uh, just to make it a little bit easier to do some routing. Orientation of the parts makes a big deal when you're routing. Um, if you're having trouble getting all the connections without using a lot of, um, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, gymnastic skills to kind of get there, just go ahead and start rotating the parts around and see if you can get a better, a better layout. In this case, let's start with N4. Uh, so you can see here what it does is it actually highlights all the different uh, areas where N4 is connected. Uh, so in this case, um, it's, you know, these two, these two, and then this part here. So in this case, it started out in the middle uh, bottom layer, which is the blue. I want to actually, oops, uh, I want to start out with the top layer. So select top here, because then that way we don't need any sort of via. We'll connect that guy. We'll connect here. Uh, um, I want to go down here like that. And then I want to go down to this guy. So that connects those guys, um, this guy here is N1, uh, this is this should be power here, right? Yep. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna route through this guy like that. Connect through it again. Now this uh, avoid feature is very, very handy. It's a lot better than the old way to do it. You would have had to manually figure that out on your own. Um, okay. And now uh, we do have a little bit of, of a schmutz here where we got to worry about that. So we'll have to figure that out in a minute. And then uh, this guy connects there, that guy connects there, uh, this guy. Let's go ahead and route that guy and route that guy. And now, okay, we'll do that. That's an interesting way to do it but it certainly works. All right, so now we're left with just two connections here, which are right here. So how do we do that? We have a couple different options here. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, how to do it using a, a via. So a via allows you to go between the top and the bottom layer. Yep, that's easy. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna start here, we're gonna go up, I'm gonna do one click and that's gonna kinda allow you to make that left hand, right hand turn. I'm gonna hit the middle mouse button, which drops a via. I'm gonna click and set the via in place. Now you can see we're routing on the bottom layer. We can turn around and run this back down here. Go right. I wanna option it out here a little bit. Yep, hit the middle mouse button, drop another via. And then back up to the top there. So there you go. That is connected these together. You'll notice the rat's nest is now gone. We will do exactly the same thing here. Back down, make the right hand turn, drop the via and connect it. There you go. So you'll see here if I turn uh, essentially everything off, right? Uh, you'll see there are no rat's nests. Um, All right, now if I hit uh, DRC and I say check, I get uh, nothing pops up, which means there's no errors. Uh, now there is still, the printed circuit board is still, as you can see, way bigger than it needs to be. Uh, so the easiest way to do that is just click on the move, I'll grab this line and slide it down. Uh, put it there, slide it down. Okay, 
So there you go. We've made it significantly smaller. So uh, let's move this guy here. Put it. Uh, we'll put that guy right there. Put that guy right here. Then that'll allow us to slide this down even further. Say so maybe something like that, like that. Yeah, there's still a little bit of uh, unused space here. That's fine. You can make it a little bit smaller, something like that, if you wanted. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. I will tell you, uh, printed circuit board manufacturers do charge you by the square inch, millimeter, centimeter, whatever their unit of measure is. Uh, so the smaller a board is for what you're trying to accomplish, the the less you're going to be charged for that. So in this case, you know, you could slide this guy in a little bit like that. Um, move JP2 to the inside, you know, and again, eek a little bit more of space out uh, off your your part here um, now there are some rules here and i'll show it to you if i drag it here and kind of drop my board line there you can see these red things that pop up that's the automatic uh, design rule check what that's telling you is you now have an error on your printed circuit board uh, in this case if you were to say select drc and say check it's going to give you the list it says hey you have uh, 16 errors all on the dimension layer or uh, dimension uh, value uh, on layers one and 16. So if you click on it, it's gonna uh, take you, kind of jump you to where the error is. And so in this case, what you're doing is you're violating the distance between the uh, edge of the board and a hole or a trace or something like that. So, all right, there we go, there you go. All right, let's move this guy a little bit. Get it off the edge and then move this guy just a little bit get that off the edge all right i like to go through and make all of my um parts here or i'm sorry my text all the same size the way you do that is you just use the change command here change size um, i found uh, anything smaller than 32 is too small to read uh, with the silk screen uh, so I, I typically do 32, 40, something like that. So we're going to sec select 40 here, select all the things. Uh, those are already 40. These are not. So you can see how it's making it bigger and bigger. Uh, one other thing to note is if you go under text, um, you know, you can enter uh, my board, um, click OK. Um, and you can see here it's asking you where, what, what layer do you want to put it on? You generally don't want to put text on their copper layer, but you can. I've done it in the past. Uh, in this case, I want to put it on the on the names layer. Um, uh, here it's a, a you know 40 uh, size. Uh, the ratio I like to set to 15. Um, that gives you can see how it kind of beefs up the ratio there. How it makes it more. Um, let me change it back to eight by default, um, and I'll put it down there, and then I'll change it later. And then we want to change it to uh, vector. Uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so uh, change ratio. I want to change the ratio to 15. Click OK, and I want to click on that. See how it made it thicker? Um, the thicker it is, the easier it's going to be to print, the more visible it's going to be in the board. If you have super thin text, um, the silk screen's not going to go down very well, and it'll likely chip off at some point. So uh, that's just a kind of my personal preference, but again, it's, it's something that uh, lesson learned from years of doing this, right? So U1, uh, U2. Now these designators are important for someone who is manufacturing the board. This tells them, uh, you give them a bill of materials. It's gonna say U1 is part, in this case, APA 102. You know, U2 is the same thing. And then JP1 and JP2, whatever they might be. So uh, there you go. That is your printed circuit board done, ready to be exported via CAM. Okay, so that was creating the printed circuit board. Super exciting, huh? So hopefully you learned something from this video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, if you don't like it, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Leave any questions or comments you might have down below. And please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified for new content. Stay tuned for part three.